You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. It is, as we say often, the silly season, the coaching carousel, that news cycle never really dies, and the only people that really could cause the news cycle to die are the coaches that could do like Mike Tomlin did and completely deny what's being reported and do so emphatically, and all this really would just go away. But um, some coaches refuse to do that, and so rumors uh, abound the latest name to kind of be thrown out there is um, a current NFL head coach, but it's not Mike Tomlin. It's Matt Rule. And it was thrown out courtesy of Joel Klatt, who was a guest on The Herd with Colin Cowherd on Fox Sports. And just give a listen. This is how it sounded. Do you feel like the ceiling has been hit at Penn State? I've been told that Matt Rule is not all the way in on the NFL moving forward and that he could potentially come back down to any okay, number so let, of these let, jobs. So let's say So Joel Klatt throwing out that he's been told Matt Rule not all the way in on the NFL and could come back to one of these jobs. The interesting th uh, part about Matt Rule, remember is he is a Penn State alum. So and he got to start coaching as a volunteer assistant at Penn State back in 1998. 23 years ago, it's where his coaching career began as a volunteer assistant at his alma mater. And he has had a he has had your typical grinder career. Grind it out in the muck until you finally break through. And look where he is. He's 46 years old, still a relatively young man. He's been a head coach at two FBS jobs, including a Power 5 job, and now he's in his second year as a head coach in the NFL at just 46, but look at what he went through to get there. Volunteer assistant at Penn State, linebackers coach at Albright, defensive line coach for two years at Buffalo, one year as the defensive line coach at UCLA back in 2001. He went to Western Carolina, where he was there as an assistant for three seasons, excuse me, four seasons. In 06, he goes to Temple as the defensive line coach, and then every year at Temple, his responsibilities increased. He went from defensive line coach in 06 to quarterbacks coach and recruiting coordinator in 07. From, imagine Ed Ogeron being your defensive line coach and flipping to your quarterbacks coach. I mean, that's how bizarre a twist that is. Then he was the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. And then he was the OC tight ends coach and recruiting coordinator in 2011. He left Temple for one year, went to the, uh, the New York Giants as, the, as an assistant offensive line coach, and then jumped back to Baylor as the head coach where he was there for four seasons, left Temple for Baylor, got that job, was there for three seasons after the Art Bryles mess, and of course now is in year two with the Carolina Panthers. I look at Matt Rule, and I say his... I think when I look at his path as being very similar to what Urban Meyer did. Having an undefeated season at Bowling Green, going to Utah, having great success there, having an undefeated season, and then ultimately getting the Florida job where, you know, in, in year two at Florida, he won a national title. Now we know Herb left and then went to Ohio State, and we know the path it's taken. But I'm talking about earlier in his career. That's sort of the path that Urban Meyer took. Matt Rule... I to be very clear, I've not heard Matt Rule's name from anybody associated with LSU. Okay, I just want to be very clear about that. It, I'm not t doing the Matt Rule thing because I feel like that's percolating over on on Nicholson. I think this is something that Joel Klatt threw out there, and I think it's a real possibility that one day Matt Rule could end up back in college football because I do believe some guys are just better college coaches than NFL coaches. Ryan Clark was with us earlier today, and I thought he said it very, very pointedly. You know, in college, you can inspire young people. You can motivate them to play above their abilities. That doesn't really happen in the NFL. You kind of are physically what you are, and if you're not good enough, you go get someone who is. 
But Matt Rule took two of the worst jobs in college football. You know, if, I, if you ask me what are the worst jobs in college football, Temple and Baylor would be on the list. Rutgers and Kansas would be there as well. I think those, throw, put, them in, put them in a, in a hat, shake them up, pull it out. Three of those are power five. Temple's not. But you realize when Matt Rule went to Temple and won a conference title when they won the AAC, that was Temple's first football conference title in 50 years, a half a century. They had not won a football conference championship in 50 years. That dude did it twice, back to back seasons. He went from two and ten to six and six to ten and four to ten and three. I mean, it's incredible. He he won double digit games at Temple and won two conference titles. He beat Penn State, beat his alma mater, beat Penn State. And while he seemingly could have picked his landing spot, he decides to go to Baylor. Another historically putrid job that Art Bryles made relevant. Of course, you had a Heisman Trophy winner there with RG3, but Art Bryles left them it with NCAA sanctions and a big pile of mess. And year one, Matt Rule inherited a team that went 1-11. They were terrible. But he went from 1-11 to 7-6. and six. And then from 7-6 and six to 11-3. and three. They went to the Sugar Bowl. They played in the Big 12 Championship in a great game against Oklahoma, ultimately came up short, and then went and played and lost in the Sugar Bowl. They were 11-1, and one, lost the Big 12 Championship game, and then lost the Sugar Bowl. I mean, that dude can flat out coach college football. And if he ended up in Baton Rouge, I'd, I'd be ecstatic. The question is, is he long for the NFL? Does Matt Rule go after two years and say, yeah, this really isn't for me? The curious part about that is, what if James Franklin were to leave Penn State? Would Penn State be a more attractive job for Matt Rule? Maybe so. It's his alma mater. And you can understand why that would tug on the emotional heartstrings and why that might play really well for someone like Matt Rule. Now, we'll talk about James Franklin here in a quick second, but I do, I do believe that Matt Rule would do a fantastic job here. There is one very curious part of all this, and that's the timing with the NFL season. Like the NFL plays until January. So, and especially now with a 17-game regular season, the NFL has been pushed in a week further than even it normally is. So, if you're Scott Woodward and you're considering someone from the NFL, like the conversation with Tomlin or now because Joel Klatt threw out, threw out Matt Rule's name, Anyone you're considering with the NFL, even like a lot of people think about Joe Brady. Okay, well, you're now going past the December signing period. So the real question is, if you're Scott Woodward, are you willing to wait until January for your coach? Are you willing to let this thing go past the December signing period before you make a hire? And if you don't land the plane with your NFL guy, now so many other jobs have been filled, your pool of candidates has really shrunk. So you're taking a very calculated risk if you wait on an NFL guy. So you got to make sure that's signed, sealed, and delivered. Done. Done, done, done. If you go that route. Now, James Franklin is the other sort of interesting um, character here. We heard James Franklin uh, answer an indirect question last week where the media member asked if he was tired of being asked about uh, this. And... He didn't deflect it. And then the story came out about him changing representation and going with Jimmy Sexton at CAA, which drummed up this whole conversation again. And then on Wednesday night after practice, James Franklin is there meeting with reporters outside of the practice field at Penn State, and he's asked about it again, all the noise being a distraction as they're getting ready to play number 5 Ohio State. And James Franklin had an opportunity to deflect all this, and he did not. Um, I think I have shown my loyalty um, to this team, to this program, to this community. Um, I, I think there's, I think I've been pretty consistent with that. There's times that you, you put in challenging situations, um, and and I just always want to be able to, when I say something, it's done, and it's it's in stone. And when you're talking about the future, that 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 can be challenging at times. Um, so. I am fiercely loyal uh, to Penn State. I am fiercely loyal, most importantly, to these players and, and the staff. 
Um, but there's a lot of moving parts with all of these things. There's a lot of moving parts, some of which we have talked about in the past. Um, but at some point when it's appropriate, I, I would love to sit down with you guys and, and just kind of talk through college football, and talk through um, these circumstances and these situations that come up. Um, but you know. So James Franklin, when asked about the noise, says, when I say something, I want it to be done. I want it to be in stone. But when you're talking about the future, that's really challenging. What does that tell you? I mean, it tells you he's not willing to say anything set in stone. Like, he says, and then he goes on to say, I'm fiercely loyal to Penn State and these players, but there's a lot of moving parts. Like, how in the world can anybody quell any of the noise when the head coach goes on a rambling thing for 60 seconds, for a minute and five seconds, where he refuses to answer the most obvious question or deny the way that we've seen Mike Tomlin do or Mel Tucker do. I mean, I don't know how you come out of that thinking anything other than James Franklin is very uncertain about his future. What I'm willing to say about James Franklin is what I've said for the past week or so. Initial contact with James Franklin's representation did not go well, and I think there might be some personality clashes there. Uh, I am of the opinion at this point, ear to ground, that James Franklin likely stays at Penn State. As he said there, a lot of moving parts, but I think he's likely going to stay at Penn State with a new deal and make a lot more money. He's making 5-5 five, five right now, and I think he's going to be able to leverage a lot of this attention into more money. But they've also lost two games in a row. They lost to Iowa, and then they lost to Illinois in that ridiculous nine overtime game. Now you got Ohio State. Does James Franklin have a lot of leverage if he loses back-to-back-to-back games? Maybe not. Stay tuned. Because when you say something, you want it to be in stone. You want it to be done. And that's tricky when you're talking about the future. That might go in the pantheon of the worst answer ever by a coach about the the job speculation question. That, that might be the worst. I've ever, let's file that one away, lock and key, as in the conversation for the worst answer ever to the speculation about jobs. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.